Welcome to the third example for chapter two. So as with the previous problems, we're gonna go through the same problem solving process. And the goal has always been and will continue to be to focus on how we solve the problem, not on just what is the number answer for this particular example. Because when you have to try these on your own, the numbers will be different, the situation will be slightly different, but the process will be exactly the same. All right, so the first thing that we always wanna do when we are solving problems is to draw a picture. That's gonna be true in every single chapter for the whole semester. So we have a car. Maybe at this point we're getting really good at drawing turtle cars. And it is driving. And we can start to make a list of the pieces of information we're given. The very first thing that we learn about that car is that it's traveling at 30 meters per second. We're told that it puts on the brakes, so we will have the acceleration be pointing in the opposite direction. That's how it's able to slow down. And we're told that it stops. So stops tells us zero meters per second is the final velocity and the distance is 70 meters. So if we choose to start at some initial point, then the place where it stops has a final position of 70. So in our little list, if we choose our starting place position to be zero, then the end position is 70 meters. All right, so here's our first two steps completed. The third step is to identify our unknown. So as a reminder, we normally write this as find something when something else is true. But we commented in the previous example that this is a little bit tougher for finding acceleration. So we need to find two things that are true at the end of the problem. Okay, so we are trying to find the acceleration if x equals 70 when v equals zero meters per second. That these two are the end pieces of information in the problem and that's what allows us to solve for the acceleration. Another way you could have gone about this was realize that there's no time information given. And we have the no time equation. So the no time equation is also known as the VX equation. Those are the same equation, two different names for it. So with that now figured out, we can write down the equation that we're gonna use. So it's the VX equation. And as always in this particular step, we are writing out the full equation before we're plugging numbers in because plugging numbers in is step five. So we have zero squared equals 30 squared plus two times our unknown acceleration times 70 minus zero. So we have zero equals 900 plus 140 times A. So we can subtract 900 from both sides so that we have negative 900 equals 140A. And so we divide both sides by 140, so negative 900 over 140, and our acceleration is negative 6.43 meters per second squared. All right, and always, always we end with that step six check. So does this make sense? And so let's think about two things here. One, the negative sign. 
we knew we had an arrow pointing left from our picture because it's slowing down, and so we definitely expected that negative sign to show up. The other thing we can check is the number value. This is a little higher than some of the other car problems we've seen, but it is still well within reasonable numbers for cars. And it is worth pointing out that we commented in the lecture video that cars are going to have a very different range of acceleration values than, for example, basketballs or other sports equipment that can bounce a lot easier. So with the sign and the um, number value, we can say, yes, it does indeed make sense. And the problem is over. All right, so I will see you in the next video.